movies, television, books, music, games, comics. Pop culture is one of the things that makes life worth living. And pop culture can be a window into your soul. Welcome to Blew My Mind. Where Shrink Tank contributors share personal, mind-blowing, pop culture experiences. I'm Dr. Craig Pullman, neurodevelopmental psychologist, author, Rolling Stones fan, Trekkie, and Yoda disciple. I'm Dr. Melissa Miller, therapist, author, film producer, above average snowboarder, and Harry Potter fan. I'm curious, Melissa, what actress would you want to portray you in a biopic of your life? So my pick is not because I think she looks like me, but because I love how she, I love her as an actress, Rachel McAdam. McAdams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 she's cool. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I would go with Jason Bateman. Really? Also, don't, I don't think he looks like me, but... Um, He's such a great straight man, and uh-huh. I'm increasingly like coming to be aware that I'm sort of the straight man in my life. That all the I've got I'm surrounded by characters and my family at work and just everywhere. So I'm just kind of trying to make sense of everything around me. That's a good it, pick. I yeah, can see that. Yeah, yeah I so. love it. Um, well, let's get rolling because our topic today is unsung movie performances that blew our mind. Now the ground rules are that these uh, perf- these performers were not Oscar nominated for their performances. And they were overshadowed by other cast members or sort of flew under the radar. Mm -hmm. But we're going to give them props here. So, Craig, what's your selection? I'm going back to 2008 and The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is the quintessential Batman movie, right? Agreed. Christopher Nolan directed it, and he brought this gritty realism. There's no superpowers of any character and really topical themes and an outstanding cast. You've got Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne, Batman, Michael Caine as Alfred, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal as Rachel, Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox. Now, Melissa, when you think of The Dark Knight, though, who comes to mind? Uh, absolutely Heath Ledger as the Joker. Yeah, he was he was great, and, and he won an Oscar uh, for uh, Best Supporting Actor, and he, he was amazing, one of the best villains on screen ever. But there was someone else in that movie who I really think lit it up and in many ways was just overshadowed, and that is Aaron Eckhart as Harvey Dent, or he becomes Two-Face. Now, uh, he's the district attorney, and he's introduced early on in the film as a really great guy and a hero. And here is a, an interchange. He's having dinner with Rachel, his girlfriend, who is uh, Bruce Wayne's ex-girlfriend. And Bruce Wayne is there with his date. And they're talking about some things about sort of like the, the, the ethics of having a vigilante in the city. And he says some things that are real foreshadowing for what his fate will be. Gotham City is proud of an ordinary citizen standing up for what's right. Gotham needs heroes like you, elected officials, not a man who thinks he is above the law. Exactly. Who appointed the Batman? We did. All of us who stood by and let scum take control of our city. But this is a democracy, Harvey. When their enemies were at the gates, the Romans would suspend democracy and appoint one man to protect the city. And it wasn't considered an honor, it was considered a public service. Harvey, the last man that they appointed to protect the Republic was named Caesar, and he never gave up his power. Okay, fine. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And of course, he does live live long enough to become the villain. But before he does, there are some hints that even though he's a great guy, he's got a darker side. And here's a little clip from when he's interrogating someone and, and he shows that. You wanna play games? How's that feel? I wouldn't! You don't think I will? No. No, I wouldn't. That's why I'm not gonna leave it up to me. Ed, you gotta keep your head. Tails, not so lucky. He's playing Russian roulette with this with this uh, criminal there, and it shows he's obsessed with this coin that he uses to to determine things, and that becomes the scarred coin later. Um, he just he's really this edgy guy, and what pushes him over the edge, what turns him into Two-Face, both physically and with his soul torn apart, is the death of Rachel. And here's that scene. It's really, it's pr- pretty intense. No! No! No, not me! Why are you coming for me? No! Rachel! Rachel! Harvey. No! Rachel! Okay. Rachel! 
Harvey, it's okay. It's all right, listen. Some... Gosh, Craig, with all of these clips, he... I had forgotten just how great he was. I mean, really, when I think about this movie, he is not a character that stood out for me at all until I go back and really see. I mean, he really held his own in this movie in a great way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and there are some scenes where he's with the Joker or one particular scene where he's with the Joker. And I think he and Heath Ledger are evenly matched. If Heath Ledger hadn't been so amazing and if there hadn't been such um, of a cultural touchstone with the Joker character, I think we'd be remembering Aaron Eckhart and his performance in this movie. It's really fantastic. Um, Towards the end, he has become Two-Face. Half of his face is scarred. He's got the, the scarred coin and he's... He's gone off the deep end, and there's and the finale is very intense and emotional. And I, I had a hard time watching this as a parent because he's got he's holding Commissioner Gordon's young son hostage, and he's got Batman there and Gordon, and he's threatening to kill the son, and then he he says some really scary things. The world is cruel, and the only morality in a cruel world is chance, unbiased, unprejudiced. His son's got the same chance she had. 50-50. I have to say, that is the scariest I've ever heard the word fair uttered. Mm. The way he says that just Mm. sends chills down my spine. It's really... Um, cool to have see these different clips from one he goes from a really intense but kind of um, upstanding citizen to just how dark and evil he can seem yes and here's here's sort of his 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 tour de force his final moments on screen Rachel's death was my fault please don't punish the boy please punish me I'm about to Hey, your boy's gonna be all right, Gordon. Lie. Like I lie. Commissioner Gordon's basically pleading for his son's life, and Two Face is taunting him, telling him to, to basically lie, tell his son it's gonna be okay when it's not gonna be okay, the way he had to try to um, try to help Rachel just moments before she died. Really intense, grim performance that blew my mind. It blew my mind when I saw it in the theater, and I, I still I can't believe that people aren't remembering Aaron Eckhart in the same class as Heath Ledger. Yeah, phenomenal movie. Um, but now I want to talk a little bit about my favorite actress. Go for it. I think was, who did not get enough attention for her role as the bride in the Kill Bill series. And of course, I'm talking about Uma Thurman. I think Uma Thurman is a phenomenal actress, but normally we see her in very feminine roles and um, in fluffier roles. This, to have her in a Quentin Tarantino film as a really strong, um, desperate for vengeance, uh, wronged mother was outstanding. She was so powerful. And um, I, I want to say ahead of time, I don't have any clips to share and one of the reasons is because she does not do there's not a lot of dialogue for her she doesn't talk a lot she's really um she's in fight scenes she is reacting she's expressive there's not a lot of words but that's what makes her performance even that more incredible because i think i think it takes a really good actress to pull um these horrific scenes off without any words. For sure. She's outstanding in, in these two movies. She's the bride, Beatrix Kiddo. And I, I love how you, you, the um, Bill keeps referring to her as Kiddo, like it's a nickname, but you realize it's actually her name. <laughs> that was kind of funny. And, and she has this interesting arc that she's driven by revenge mm-hmm. early on because she thinks that her daughter is dead. Right. And then, spoiler... She's alive she's and alive. well. So then she's driven. She still wants to kill Bill, but she wants her daughter back. So she's right. fighting to to win back her daughter. Right. Both both reasons are driven by maternal instinct, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's it's amazing how many horrific things she has to endure in this movie. Oh, yeah. Between being buried alive, um, 
uh, waking up in a hospital and finding that she's her body has been sold to be used. Um, um, incredible uh, scenes of her learning how to fight like a samurai and then fighting an entire army of samurais. The crazy 88s. Right. She, she, she gets hurt in almost every scene. And the, the stoic, determined nature of her is just so powerful and fun to watch. I, I tell you, uh, one of my favorite moments of the two movies, and it gets to, to, to that notion that, that it's still fun, she's so resilient, is after she's dug herself out of the grave... And then she's walking, there's a scene, she's walking across the street at night towards this diner and she looks like pig pen. Like there's this dust flying <laughs> off her in all directions. And she comes in and she's just covered with dirt and she sits down at the counter and says, may I have a glass of water? <laughs> I'm good to go. Just need some water. This is also why I love Quentin Tarantino films because he splashes in humor at all the right points to give a little levity because it is an intense hence film to watch yes uh, really really good great pick um, mind-blowing performance by uma thurman so let's bring this in for landing if you're listening and have a thought about unsung movie performances or would like to share an idea for a future show please email us at feedback at shrinktank.com our audio engineer is sean beck he is the wind beneath our wings. Be sure to check out all of the content, including articles, videos, quizzes, and surveys on our website. Shrinktank.com is the place for all of your psychology and pop culture needs. Until next time, I'm Craig Pullman. I'm Melissa Miller. And this is Blew My Mind. 